When Sri Lanka became an independent country from Britain in 1948, it seemed to have a very bright future. It had a sound economy, a stable political system. The scourge of South Asia, malaria, was being defeated. The capital city of Colombo, where we stand today, uh, was a thriving center. Job opportunities were growing as a result of a rising tourist industry. Sri Lanka's products and exports did well on world markets. In short, Sri Lanka was an example to underdeveloped, newly independent countries around the world. For a time, all went well on this West Virginia-sized island off the southern tip of India. The old and the new found easy accommodation in a country once ruled by the Portuguese, the Dutch, and the British. The per capita gross national product rose to first place among the countries of South Asia. Not only tea, but other exports, including textiles, rubber, timber, and spices, sustained a healthy economy. But the colonial period left another legacy, one that was to threaten the very existence of the state. Wild products from the plantations established by the British were shipped overseas, trouble brewed between the people who regarded themselves as Sri Lanka's native inhabitants, the Sinhalese, and immigrants who were brought here to work on those plantations, the Tamils. The Sinhalese, who constitute about three quarters of Sri Lanka's population, are Buddhists. In the country's capital, Colombo, and throughout its southwestern core area, the symbols of Buddhism mark the cultural landscape. The Tamils, who form a minority of just under 20% of Sri Lanka's population, are mostly Hindus. Although they're demanding a separate homeland and even an independent Tamil state in the north of Sri Lanka, a large part of Colombo itself is a Tamil neighborhood. Here, the city takes on an Indian character with a variety of brightly decorated shrines and mosques, busy street markets reminiscent of those of southern India selling grains and fruits but no animal products, and a profusion of Hindu and Muslim symbols ranging from street temples to dress modes. This landscape with its clash of cultures is a world apart from the Sri Lanka of the Sinhalese. The political system of Sri Lanka turned out to be incapable of coping with the country's political geography. Here in the parliament, Tamils lost much of their stake in the country and violence followed. The peace was shattered by the assassination of national leaders. Near the parliament building stands a memorial to President Bandaranaika, the characteristic blue garland of his alliance party draped over the statue. In 1972, the so-called Tamil Tigers announced their aim of an independent state. Since 1986, Sri Lanka has been afflicted by armed conflict that has cost thousands of lives. Everywhere, police and soldiers in battle gear stand watch. The tourist industry was severely affected by these events, and the waterfront hotels of the beaches near Colombo stand virtually empty, waiting for the violence to end and peace to return. The result has been not only to damage the tourist industry, but also to defer needed investment in infrastructure. Superbly situated hotels need updating, and others were never built. This choice beachfront property was going to be developed as part of the overall tourist plan for Colombo, the Colombo area. But unfortunately, the Civil War interfered with that. People stopped coming, and as a result, it lies unused and undeveloped today. In the interior, Sri Lanka appears little affected by the political struggles in the capital or the strife in the north. Despite the conflict, the paddies still can feed the country's nearly 20 million people. Goods still move by ox cart. Many jobs still are done by hand, slowly, in time-honored ways. Bricks are made manually, using local clay and mud, and shaping them one by one. Once made, they are laid out to dry in the sun and then placed in a kiln that has served this purpose for as long as locals can remember. Later, they will be taken to the building site by buffalo cart. In the mid-1990s, Sri Lanka was showing signs of revival even before the Tamil issue was settled. The steel and glass towers rising above the Colombo townscape built by Singaporean investors, reflect the hope that this Buddhist outpost will once again merit the name the ancient Arabs gave to it, serendipity.